What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Adam Blompier's top 10 wrestling matches of 2022, man. You guys wanted me to uh well I checked out um the, the worst matches, so it only makes sense to check out his list of the best matches you guys were telling me I should. So that's what I'm gonna do for you guys, man. Also, I'm still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world man it's still there you see the championship over there in the back i'm definitely gonna be adding some more championships to the wall coming soon next year so be on the lookout for that but i appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel road to 150k let's get right we're into marching it. towards the end of the year another domino falling in the inexorable trail towards death i don't like winter but i do like wrestling most of the time and while 2022 has often exhibited the worst of wrestlers it's seen some of the best of wrestling some goofy nonsense wrestling some intense bloody wrestling some eye-watering wrestling and some mm -hmm. wrestling with demons we're a week away from christmas but i got you a present early this year i'm adam hailing from parts of unknown and here are my 10 favorite pay-per-view matches of 2022 make Should sure you're some subscribed good ones on this list unknown for all the rest of our end of year content that we've got coming out because we did loads of end of year content last year you can check all that out all the 2020 world goods we did loads of it last year and you should do check it out and make sure you subscribe for all of this year's ones before we get into today's <laughs> list i'd like to take a minute to thank our sponsor for this video raid been saying it for years in 2022 the acclaim truly have arrived becoming mm -hmm. super over in that organic wholly unplannable way riding a wave of goofy bollocks and their white hot catchphrase checks notes scissor me daddy ass a sentence where all the words make sense just not in that order acclaimed yeah. and swerve in our glory the excellent team of my husband keith lee and swerve strickland have had three matches this year and all three have been brilliant but the best was their first at all out carried by chicago's feverish euphoria for the very mm -hmm. talented and very silly acclaimed it's one of those beautiful and it was crazy a lot of people felt like they should have called an audible here because they this was one of the best matches of the night they were super white hot for them they wanted them to be champs right then and there accident matches where one of the teams is super over and everyone suspects they won't win because that's not the plan but there are moments where the fans are allowed to truly believe pure undistilled crowd reaction yeah total joy number nine mjf versus cm punk 2 revolution despite the feud running four months with punk's departure from AEW, it looks like we're only going to ever have one mjf versus oh, cm punk man. match on pay-per-view a real shame as these two had real joker batman energy still yeah we got the dog color match at revolution and it's really something to see i honestly really don't know how good of a match it actually is it's really long hard to watch at points and devolves into basically gruesome slugging but there's yeah. also something simply brilliant about that and while some death matches are a blood fest for blood fest's sake the hard to watch element in the latter third of this match actually complements the story of the feud really not very well, enjoyable match for sure it takes both men to the point where no one's right anymore they're just going to kill each other cm punk's aew run it was the best of times it was the blur Ah, oh, this sucks, bro. I, it's, this is probably one of the most disappointing things about 2022 this year for wrestling is his run was cut so short in the company. Oh, man. Imagine. Just can we just imagine if none of this happened at the media scrum and MJF was the guy, was the guy to be CM Punk. I mean, I think they were setting it up that way for the championship. I think they were setting it up that way, and it would have been brilliant. Because then we could have had the back and forth. Because at this point, MJF came back. People were comparing his pipe bomb to CM Pump's pipe bomb. And they could have really went back and forth on that commentary alone. Because they're bringing it back. MJF is kind of following in the footsteps of CM Punk. Bucking the authority, trying to get what he feels like he deserves. Oh, my God. It would have been so good. Oh, it would have been good. Uh, you wouldn't even have to tease turning him babyface. You could have kept CM Punk babyface. You could have kept MJF heel. The crowd still would have been CM Punk MJF. It would have been one of those, it's a win-win situation. Oh, this, oh, God damn it. 
toughest of times. <laughs> Number eight, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, SummerSlam. This shit I was good. I shouldn't be on the list, but I can't help myself. This shit it's was too good. Daft. I nearly fell off the sofa laughing at some of the parts of this match. And if you don't have time for that and you're resting, you <laughs> might be taking the pants biffing a bit too seriously. It's another main event where Roman Reigns wins with the help of the Bloodline, which has accounted for a vast amount of his pay-per-view bouts this year. But yeah. also, there's a tractor that lifts yeah, the ring bro. off the ground. I he, he. And Brock Lesnar also jumps off the this, tractor. This was great. This was him, fun. And he refused to be killed. And the match ended with Roman standing on a mountain. And the mountain was mostly made of Brock Lesnar, like all mountains are. This, this was so fun, Brock bro. And Roman were wrestling a again. I groaned as loudly as anyone, especially yeah. after their Mania match underwhelmed. But hot dogs, they didn't end their feud. And they better have ended their feud. Nah, th this is it. I don't care what nobody says. This is, in my opinion... The first match they ever had was really good. This was a great way, and some would say maybe even better than their their first original match that they had. Some would say that, but honestly, this is the the second best match, in my opinion, that they've ever had. And it needs to end here. Their first match was great. Their last match, hopefully, they have together was fantastic great way to end off their saga no more it doesn't there doesn't need to be no more matches between brock and roman let it go that was it shit was fucking great dude on a ludicrous car crash high number seven becky lynch versus bianca belair wrestlemania 38 this year's wrestlemania this was a well good go one too in history as the stupidest wrestlemania of all time with steve austin driving kevin owens around the arena on a quad bike in the middle of a main event match somehow vince mcmahon air quotes wrestling for air quotes taking an air quotes stunner yeah and ronda starting her comeback to wwe she means to go on getting derped out with a big boot of all things but there were some yeah. back to basics honest to goodness proper good proper wrestling on the show namely becky lynch versus bianca belair which i think might be the best women's match in mania history it was yeah, pretty good even better than charlotte Asuka. right time for a title change right winner really strong character work including an accidental moment of brilliance with bianca taking a stiff boot to the face and working through the rest of the match with one eye bianca mm -hmm. might just be the est of wrestlemania and that's the crazy i forgot she ended she did get her eye like swollen like she, her eye was swollen she still kept going nah fantastic match though at this point number six the elite versus the dark order all out there have been two really good elite six man tag matches on pay-per-view this year the return match full gear against death triangle was ace featuring a shocking upset that for me really worked but mm -hmm. for moves and feels got to go with the finals of the trios title tournament at all out omega and the bucks versus page reynolds and silver not only is it the good old hyper wrestling i don't think i've seen this match i may have but i'm not sure i don't Adam think i heard Page did face to face with kenny omega for the first time since their main event match at full gear the year before that moment where page and omega drag their partners to the corner to tag themselves in is a each of a spot and the confrontation absolutely lived up to the hype it's a real shame that the scrum fallout and subsequent hangman injuries stuttered the storyline momentum for this match especially considering it was another step in john silver becoming a breakout star but the match itself is f***ing gangbusters yeah no i don't think i actually i think i caught bits of that match from that show i think i caught bits of it because i don't even think uh was i able to watch it live i'm not sure I forgot what had happened. I think we were trying to stream it. Something had happened for that stream. But yeah, I don't think I had to rewatch that show. Number five, Orange Cassidy versus Will Ospreay, Forbidden Door. The most fun match at a show designed to be a this I did watch. Fun match. This Will was Ospreay's actually really good. <laughs> stars like that fucking gumdrop. This is really this good. Point. I was and not it's hard to argue that. He's not one of the premier athletes in the business. Orange Cassidy has made a career out of comedy matches where the joke is that OC doesn't go until he goes harder than anyone's ever gone. Both men are incredibly fluid wrestlers and honestly, they might just have had the most chemistry out of anyone on the Forbidden Door card and it just goes and goes and goes counter after counter, kick out after kick out. There's a storm breaker into a hurricane run and fall that'll blow your underpants off. It is a total sugar rush of a match. And there's also nah, a bit where Oscar fishes around Orange Cassidy's pockets and finds a bird and i enjoyed that it made me smile there's a lot of smiles in this one number four fdr versus the briscoes final battle if i like lance storm can be serious for a moment let's talk about some 
big old proper throwback classic wrestling for growth. I heard this was really, really good and 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 uh, uh, very bloody. <laughs> FTR may be no fun on Twitter, but they've potentially had the best year that a wrestling tag team has ever had. The rematch with the Bucks on Dynamite and Instant Classic against Aussie Open for New Japan. They've had four five-star matches in one calendar year that is unheard of and it's bloody impressive and speaking of bloody their wars with the briscoes this year have been phenomenal i'm not really choosing between the three matches you should go and watch all of them but their most recent double dog collar match at final battle is the most recent and most insane it's as hard hitting as expect from dem boys lord that bump to the chairs on the oh side. my the god psychology that have made fdr as great as they are oh. honestly explaining the match beyond that would just be listening spots check it out today if you haven't even the referee bled jesus wept number three yeah, I may have to check that out. johnny knoxville wrestlemania 38 yes it's a top three match of the year yeah wow me. the enjoyment of a wrestling match can change what i can understand why he was put that up there this was actually fun this was actually much more fun than i anticipated i actually had a good time watching this match and i can't be mad at it would i put it in my top 10 maybe not my top 10 maybe top 15 but this was definitely fun. This was definitely, usually matches like this just completely turn me off. But this, I had fun with it. Wildly, depending on who you watch it with. I imagine I would have had a worse time with this match if I had to watch it sat next to Jim Cornette. But I think oh, it yeah. be said of a nice sunset or anything. However, sat next to Luke Owen, for whom the early 2000s never ended, it was a peak moment in my adult life. I am not a jackass fan, and I still had a ball watching this match. That's how nakedly fun it was. The pop when Wee Man body slams yeah, Zayn was, was cool. genuine and huge. As huge as the hand that knocked Sami Zayn down at ringside. And boy, howdy, that popped us. That popped us. A real shame that the mousetrap spot didn't quite go to plan. A surprising failure of the apparently normally seamless jackass engineering, but that still doesn't change the fact this match might just be the match from this year's WrestleMania that I've rewatched the most. This one, of all of them, Sami Zayn is a hero and we do not deserve him. Yeah. Number two, fine, I will call him Gunther versus Sheamus. Right. What else needs to be said? Easily the match of the night from Clash at the Castle. So fucking great. Woo, this match was good. Easily, in my opinion, probably Sheamus, one of his best matches in his career. This was Miss so good. Clash at the Castle. Yes, <laughs> Gunther having casually another match of the year because no one wrestles like him. And anytime someone comes close to wrestling like him, a match of the year happens. Please, can we have him versus Drew McIntyre in 2023? Thank yes. You. Apparently, we're going to get him versus Brock Lesnar. And I just, oh, now, you've already seen Gunther. I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm down with either. I'm down with either. I would... Pre I'm actually down with either, bro. That could be good. Brock Lesnar, Gunther. Oh, that could be good. Or Sheamus and Gun not Sheamus. Uh, Drew McIntyre and Gunther. That can be good. Ah, uh, let me know down below. What which WrestleMania match would you prefer? Walter versus uh um versus I just keep saying Walter. Gunther versus uh Brock or Gunther versus um um drew mcintyre which which wrestlemania match would you guys prefer the versus sheamus of course you have it was the match of the night on a very very good pay-per-view and single-handedly reinvigorated sheamus's career first of all the match gave us imperium back as a unit which puts it in the top three automatically you have my gratitude yeah and then the lads just kick the shit out of each other yeah just kick the shit out of each other the opening spot where everyone just brawls around them and sheamus and gunther stand there like two dads waiting for the other to discipline their kids first genuinely highlight of my life to not only watch this match in a room full of wrestling fans but actually call it for the watch party alongside good that was chums pretty, reacting that was to cool. every horrendous kick to the face with oh. nervous overjoyed giggles a beautiful display of beautiful violence and this number one cody rhodes versus seth rollins that's hell a good one not only the match of the year but the best hell in the cell match in ages not that there haven't been really good cell matches over the past decade but most of them have just felt like regular hardcore matches inside a box a series of fun and elaborate table and weapon spots and then you're done this is the first time in a Ooh. long time that a hell in a cell match has really felt 
dangerous because yep. the, the accident of it being actually really f***ing dangerous. <laughs> a few days before, Cody Rhodes tore his pack in the gym and still went on to wrestle like oh my God. anyway, Ooh. like a true and unapologetic madman. And they didn't dance around the injury oh. either. Colin zeroes in on it, repeatedly hitting him in his real injury to sensational heat. Most underdog babyface stories feel forced and corny. This was real and created yeah. a really strange and unique experience of fearful dread and earnest support watching it. One that you don't necessarily wish to be inflicted on wrestlers oh my or God, wrestling bro. fans, but you do have to recognize how powerful it is to experience a wrestling match that felt unreal in how real it felt. And the performance of the year from <laughs> Cody Rhodes, he's a f***ing hero. Bravo forever. And that's our list. What's oh been my God, bro. You know what? I'm okay with that being the number one match of the year. I, I can't. Who? <clears throat> my man's wrestled in a hell in a cell with a torn peck. I don't care what nobody says. That is a testament to your love to the business, bro. Anybody else? Hell, I would have said, fuck that. I need to get this shit fixed. He is wrestling in a match. I'm pretty sure he told Seth, lay in, bro. Don't hold back. Target the injury. It only makes sense. Bro, oh my God. God, I, I think that's what makes this match even better because we see the visible injury. We see the real pain he's in. And now Hell in a Cell just went 10 times into crazy, uh, crazy territory because, dude, he really is wrestling with a torn peck in a Hell in a Cell match. That means anything goes, anything, any weapon he uses is just going to only make it worse. That, fantastic, bro. Fantastic. I'm okay with that being the number one match of the year. But comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite match of 2022. It doesn't matter whatever company is in. What was your favorite wrestling match of 2022, man? But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Roll to 150K. And your boy is still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one.